So in this video, we're going to take a look at how to read and use diffractograms using this very nice example from the online textbook of Dexter Perkins. Here, uh, Dexter Perkins has shown a diffractogram for the mineral halite. So halite has been set up in, a, in an x-ray diffractometer. We bombard it with x-rays, as we illustrate in another video, and we generate these peaks based on the despacings uh, uh, between the atoms and the halite structure, and we plot here we have a plot of intensity versus 2 theta. So 2 theta is, has to do with the angle of reflection, and the intensity is just how much x-ray energy is being reflected off these various planes. So here's the 200 plane. This is like a Miller indice, uh, a set of indices. There's a 220 and a 222, a 400, etc. cetera. Uh, so these uh, values in bold are, are a way to think about the positions of planes relative to crystallographic axes. We have other videos on that. For this video, I want to look at these values here. So here in this diagram, Dexter Perkins is showing the 2 theta value 31.72. That's just read off directly from that diagram. So that's the position of this peak on this horizontal axis. Over here, this guy has a 2 theta of 45.46. Now he shows a D value of 2.820. So where does that come from? It comes from Bragg's Law. Remember, Bragg's Law is n lambda equals 2d sine theta. So well, we can rearrange that. We'll let n equal to 1, so that'll just drop out of the equation and solve for d. So we have d is equal to uh, lambda divided by 2 times the sine of theta. So solving for d, we can use that to take the 2 th theta value and translate it into a d spacing that, that distance between the layers of atoms. Now, what do we use for lambda? Well, more than likely, this diffractogram was generated by using a copper source, and that copper source would have a wavelength of 1.50406 angstroms. Some other uh, XRDs, uh, XRD instruments will use cobalt, that's supposed to be an O, where the uh, wavelength is 1.79 angstroms, but uh, we're going to use co copper here because I'm pretty sure that's how this was generated, and that'll translate if we're going to uh, solve the value for the 200 as 1.5406 angstroms here in the numerator divided by 2 times the sine of theta. Now, this is the tricky part. Uh, the, th the 2 theta value is 31.72 here. It's very easy to forget that we need to cut that in half. Half of that value would be 15.86. So that's the value we're going to take the sine of. And when I do that calculation, I get a value of 2.816. And since the wavelength is in angstroms, that would also be the units for the d spacing between the layers of atoms. And that looks to be about the same value that Dexter Perkins got. Uh, rounding out to 2.82. Let's do the same thing for the 220. We'd have a D spacing here that would be equal to 1.5406 angstroms. And then that would be divided by 2 times the sine of half of 45.46, so 22.73 degrees. And when I do that calculation, I get the value of 1.994 angstroms. So that would be the distance of those layers of atoms that are uh, represented by the direction 220. And that's exactly what Dexter Perkins reports here. Now, the last thing we want to do, besides relating these numbers, is uh, think about the way in which these values are ordered. This is kind of like a fingerprint for halite. Halite not only has a strong peak at these particular angles corresponding to these d-spacings, but notice that the biggest peak is over here and the next tallest peak is over here. The way we order them is usually by allowing the lar largest peak to represent a value of 100, and then the heights of all the other peaks on this intensity scale are relative to that. So let's just count the boxes here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six boxes, goes a little bit beyond 6, but we'll just say this peak has an intensity of 6 units, whatever it is on that intensity scale, and this fellow here has a value of 2. So if this is 100, and we it's always going to be 100 for whatever the largest peak is, then this guy here is going to be deemed uh, 2 over 6, which is 1 third, or 
33% the height of the 100, so we would call it something on the order of 33. So when you see peaks listed next to the despacing, let's say a 1.994 or 2.186, uh, 816, mind you, uh, then this would be called the 100 peak, and this guy would be something close to, let's say, a 33 peak. Uh, the 33 value, meaning that its height, its intensity, is expected to be about 33% of the height of the 100 value. So these, the heights of these peaks do matter, not only the positions and the despacings themselves, but the ordering in terms of which ones are the strongest. You might have another crystal where the 220 is the strongest peak and the 200 is much shorter. So even though you'd have uh, two layers that have uh, similar despacings, their intensities would be different, and we would use both intensity and despacing together as a kind of combined fingerprint to identify a mineral such as halite.